My, my story and my, my passion for finding and developing a new way to monitor and finding parking spaces in the big cities started with this symbol. You probably don't know it, but I'm sure some of you have it as well. It's called parking karma. My wife has outstanding car parking karma. It works in a very simple way. She imagines, she visualizes that right in front of the restaurant where we want to go tonight, a car will pull out of the space exactly the very moment when we arrive. She's convinced it works. When it doesn't happen, which I think is about 90% of the time, it's my fault because I didn't visualize enough. <laughs> so, so I ask myself, how can we replace this method by something more reliable? Why isn't there a system to monitor and display something as essential as public parking spaces in the cities? Searching for parking is actually one of the most time-wasting daily activities worldwide. And why is that? Because it's entirely based on luck. So wouldn't it be great if we could replace luck or karma or instinct by something better, by knowledge? Now, uh, I want to know that at the destination where I'm going, whether there are parking spaces available or not. So I don't have to drive around like a, a blindfolded hawk. And if the city would be able to monitor the parking spaces in the city, it could take measures to solve the many problems related to public parking. Actually, 30 to 40 percent of the entire traffic in a city like Hamburg or other big cities is searching for a parking space. They're cruising around for the sole purpose of finding a space, one-third of the entire traffic. A recent study in Barcelona said it's 40 percent just cruising around for that purpose. I mean, and also that leads to very high levels of nitrogen monoxide, CO2, and fine dust as, as part of the effect. And actually, the European community earlier this year in March has lost patience because many of the cities, uh, about 30 cities in Germany, are not obeying to the legal limits of nitrogen monoxide. Hamburg is one of them, by the way. And the European community has imposed heavy fines in the millions of euro range to these cities. Reducing search traffic would be one of the most effective and efficient measures to comply with the European rules and reduce pollution. What's amazing, actually, a recent study from IBN showed that the average worldwide time to find a parking space is, tw is 20 minutes. Um, so in, in Madrid or Paris, it's even more than the 20 minutes. In Italy, drivers actually spend two years of their lives trying to find a parking space. So drivers pay with time instead of money for the parking space. And if you take an hourly income of, let's say, 16 euros per hour, you know, you're, you're talking 1,000 euros a year that you're spending on finding a parking space. Of course, if you're a lawyer, uh, you know, you're talking about a different rate per hour, you might lose 15 or 20,000 euros per year on finding a parking space. So we've created a very efficient and cost-effective way to monitor all inner-city parking spaces live at all times. And it works in a very simple way. You define your destination, and then the system tells you which parking spaces are free where you want to go and guides you to the destination. It's very simple. Green basically says there's a free parking space, and red says there's an occupied par parking space, and the orange symbol means it's going to be free in X number of minutes, for instance, in five minutes, provided that the person parking there is also correctly leaving the space when his parking time has expired, obviously. But at least you, you can decide whether you should wait or not. And that information is then transferred onto Google Maps and all other uh, devices. You can check the costs, of course, on the app, and you can also pay via mobile phone, so it's very convenient and it encourages to pay. You can check the remaining time, um, and you can, of course, also see it on your navigation devices and even filter the information so you only see the empty spaces in order not to be distracted. But, of course, the app is the easier part. The big question is how to collect and how to generate that data. So during the past two years, we've developed a new system 
to monitor these spaces in the inner cities, and they can be monitored in a very, very effective way. So we've developed what we call the DTA sensor, and that sensor um, has a built-in um, precise pan-tilt engine that has a precision of 0 0.0005 degrees. So if you imagine at a distance of 500 meters, the aberration of the sensor is only 5 millimeters. And that exactness allows us to exactly um, scan and identify the GPS position of a parked car or of an empty parking space. So we mount it at the highest possible position in the streets, and the transmission goes via M2M or UMTS or wireless LAN, but it's, it's quite simple. And what's important is that the sensors, one single sensor can scan a whole street, 180 degrees to 360 degrees, depending on the street. It can scan any uh, amount of lanes. Uh, in this case, it's, it's three different lanes, so about 100 uh, cars. And what's important is here that the, the spaces do not need to be boxed in. They need to, don't need to be marked by lines. The cars can freely define, define the spaces, and that has a number of important uh, features. So this, the, the, the scanner recognizes the shape of the car. It recognizes how long the car has, um, has been parking there and it recognizes the size of the empty space. Actually, the all the data is processed at this central sensor, and only very limited data leaves the sensor, so we are complying with all the data protection regulations and so on, so um, nobody is, is being harmed. By integrating the parking meters into the system, uh, the surveillance personnel or the um, uh, parking inspectors can also see live at all times whether somebody has paid his parking fee. And that, of course, will, I think, encourage people to do so. And actually, it's a big question for the cities how to motivate drivers to pay for parking. At the moment, the, the general uh, idea, like in Hamburg as well, is punishment. They hire more uh, police inspectors, um, which costs a lot of money too, and it's not clear whether it really creates higher income because of the high personnel costs, of course. But I believe much more in service. I think if the city offers the driver the service to really see whether there are parking spaces available, it would motivate them much more and understand that they, could, that they will pay for parking, and also they could make intelligent decisions, such as taking public transport, uh, because there are no parking spaces available, or it's too hard to find one, and maybe taking public transport at least for the last mile. I want to show you another model. Actually, that's the first pilot model that was done in the world in a very professional way uh, in San Francisco. San the city of San Francisco was the first to do a pilot project for an app to show the parking spaces. They, they did 3,000 parking spaces, and they said, in a very simple way, we're going to increase the price of parking until one space is free per block. So, in order to make sure that cars are not driving around because they will find the parking space. And so, um, they, inc they introduced what's called performance parking and basically depoliticized the whole question about parking spaces. And they drilled thousands and thousands of holes for in-ground sensors they need one or two in-ground sensors per parking space, so it's quite something, uh, it's quite an undertaking. They spent, for the first pilot, $30 million, uh, so it's, it's a very expensive undertaking in this way. In Hamburg uh, and in other big cities, actually 50 to 80% of the people parking don't pay. Um, they're what's called fair dodgers. So by giving the surveillance pers personnel uh, a device to actually show them at all times where people are not parking, uh, it will help that tremendously. And one big advantage of the sensors here is, as you see in the red area up there, that we're not only, uh, not only scanning the, uh, pa the illegal parking places, but also the illegal places, for instance, in, s in front of a red light, which is a big advantage uh, against ground sensors, uh, that we can also see immediately is somebody parked in an illegal space. 
So that means that the city will be able to generate a higher income, which then they can reinvest in public transport and other means to make the city safer. But we also realized uh, not every space is equal when we researched uh, the system and we, we developed the system. I mean, at the moment, most parking spaces are made for the biggest possible car when, when they're boxed in spaces. So the biggest defines the norm. But actually, not all cars are equal. And we want to encourage uh, the, the people go into the cities with smaller cars and encourage them maybe to take different means of transport altogether. So, I mean, imagine if, if in your airline seats, the, the airline seats would be made for the biggest possible passenger and not for us small-legged and short-legged and so on. That, we would love that. That would be great. So the message we want to give out, too, is you know, share cars and we'll show you the right parking space for your car. So we added another feature to the system, which is also patent pending, where you can select your car model at the beginning of, of your app. And then the system will tell you the exact size of the parking space that your car, uh, that is available for your car. So it measures the size of the parking space. So far, we didn't add the feature uh, driving skill, how much extra space you need to, uh, to actually get in, but it will tell you exactly the space that you need, and then it will show you, if you have a smart, for instance, whether you're going to fit in the space sideways or in the long time, so you get only the spaces that fit your model. And to encourage you further to think small, we're also adding that if you would have a smart, there would be 100 spaces available, but if you would have a Hummer, only two spaces would be actually available. So I believe it's time to make uh, parking predictable like other services. With an intelligent parking information si uh, system, the city can help drivers to save time, um, to be less stressed when they're looking for a parking space, they will consume less fuel. And clever city parking can help the city to make more income, and uh, it will create less pollution because the cities will be less congested. So I think we can convince uh, drivers uh, that parking and the service connected to parking has a price and is really fair to pay. And what we want to achieve is 100% correct parking karma. Thank you very much. <laughs>